Designed in the late 1950s and constructed between 1959 and 1962, Katagunya Dam is the third in the cascade of six dams forming the Lower Derwent Power Development. Designed and built using steel cables to anchor the concrete dam to its foundation, these 1960s era anchors are now known to be prone to corrosion. This could ultimately threaten the integrity of the dam, or put more simply, longer term, this could put the dam at risk. Therefore, Hydro Tasmania is embarking on a major project to install modern cables so that it meets current standards and will ensure the long life of the dam. This will see Katagunya continue to contribute to the hydropower generation system well into the future. When Katagunya Dam was built 50 years ago, it had a number of cables which tie the dam down to the foundation, and we now know that those cables are more susceptible to corrosion than the designers anticipated. We've actually gone and had a look at the cables to try and um, ascertain if they're corroded or not, but we're unable to positively say whether they are or they aren't. So therefore, we've had to take preemptive action and actually put new cables in. So that entails putting in 90 anchors across the dam, and some of those anchors are drilled up to 75 metres through the dam and into the foundation. Each of the anchors has a force of about 1,700 tonnes on it, which is uh, about the weight of almost 1,000 cars. So they're stressed to very, very high levels and they tie the dam down to its foundation. Katagunya is a very technically challenging project. Other dam owners in Australia and around the world have had similar sorts of issues with dams that we constructed in the uh, 1950s to 1970s using post-tension cable anchors. Katagunya Dam is probably the most complex of those, certainly in Australia and probably worldwide. Some years ago we assessed all of our dams in the portfolio. Katagunya was one of those that we felt due to a deterioration of the cables and the large population downstream and the very significant contribution it plays to the generation system. That became uh, a very high priority for us to get in and make sure that dam met current standards. It's quite small compared to other dams, especially when you compare it against around the world. It was the world's largest structure when it was built. The way in which it was built was very much state of the art. There's very few dams around the world with this shape. The coring rig, that's the small yellow rig. So they core the holes up to three metres deep and they're about 1.2 metres in diameter. And then the drilling rig follows along behind that and drills right down through the dam and into the foundation. So the drill rig you can see up on the top and they've just about finished drilling the first hole. The cables that we're using at Katagunya are the world's largest anchors, which has continued actually on a, quite a nice tradition of world first with this particular dam. The anchor technologies have been proven right around the world. The technologies aren't being developed by Hydro, but we've carefully selected a contractor who has considerable expertise in this matter. The process for the cable manufacture starts with a three tonne coil of strand. It is heated up then dragged through a pushing machine which separates the seven wires, pushes it through a grease bar which fully coats the strand, reforms the cable, pushes it into a plastic tube. That forms the free length part of the anchor which is part above the rock right up to the top of the dam. That's repeated numerous times till we get 91 strands into one bundle. Each one of the 91 strands is individually grease filled so that there's full exclusion of any air or water for the life of the anchor. The bottom 11 and a half metres of the cable is fully cleaned and that is the bond length where the grout hangs onto the steel cable which then transfers the load through into the rock. first step in installing the anchor is to uh, run the sheathing down the hole. It's poly sheathing which is welded in a number of sections. There's water equalisation required to get the sheathing to sink in the hole, so it's run down with the water inside and out. So the next stage after that first hole is drilled, we're going to take the cable that's been assembled in the yard 
and take it out across the crest of the dam and then using a careful process drop it down into the hole and grout it into position. Both the inside and the outside of the sheathing is grouted at the same rate with a straight cement grout, very low water cement ratio to give it a high strength. We wait for the grout to set for a month and then we put a very large jack on the top of the cable on the crest of the dam and pull it so we've got this force of some 1700 tonnes on the cable and then we just lock that off and then go on to the next cable. One of the interesting technologies we're using is that on the spillway section we're having to reinforce it with carbon fibre rods which is a very high tech, very strong material. The reason we reinforce the face is because we're cutting through the face as we drill through the dam. So we're drilling through existing steel reinforcement and rather than intruding through the dam through the existing reinforcement we can cut slots in the dam 14mm wide, 8 and 9 metres long and install these carbon fibre rods six per slot and then we epoxy those in to increase the reinforcement. We're trying to stabilise it against flood flows so the structure is stable under all loading conditions and increase the spillway capacity so that it can handle the largest flood we can imagine. We're standing now at the toe of the spillway section of Tatagunya Dam and this is a section of dam where we're quite concerned about uplift pressures under the spillway so we need to ensure that the water pressure that's on the upstream side of the dam, the reservoir level, doesn't actually transfer the same water pressure underneath the structure. So a key part of this uh, construction is these series of drain holes that we have here all along the toe of the dam. Each block has a number of drain holes that go right down underneath the dam. They intersect the water in the foundation. We allow the water to flow out of these drains. So you can see this drain here actually does weep a little bit of water from time to time. And that ensures that we don't actually have excess water pressure building up underneath the structure. Underneath this steel plate, there's a series of cables. And each of those cables has an instrument attached to the end. And at a certain location along the spillway, there'll be a hole drilled down into the foundation through here into which the instrument is installed. And that instrument measures the water pressure in the foundation of this dam. So when we drill the anchor holes down into the foundation and grout those in place, there's a real chance that we'll actually block these drain holes up. So we need to make sure that we're monitoring these holes the whole time that we're doing this work and any of these that stop flowing water will know that we've had an impact on the drainage arrangements under the dam and we either have to replace that drain, clean that drain or make another provision to relieve the water pressure at that location. Working in an operational spillway does pose some challenges because a flood can interrupt your work. So we've got quite a sophisticated flood warning system which gives our contractors 24 hours notice of a flood and that gives them time to actually evacuate the spillway and allow the flood to come through without damaging any equipment. So all the work you see going on here today is, is about ensuring the integrity of the dam. There's no financial benefit in the project, we don't get any more megawatts out of it. It's really about just making sure that the dam is meeting all international safety standards and protecting the downstream community. People downstream don't need to have any particular concerns about the safety. All they need to understand is that we take a portfolio approach and we're trying to discharge our responsibilities in a prudent sort of manner. We've never had any cause for concern there and we're doing this work preemptively to make sure that doesn't occur. We wouldn't like to be in the position where one of our dams causes a concern and we immediately have to then go and notify people downstream that there's a, a risk they're exposed to. We'd rather proactively get on the front foot and do the work and uh, do upgrades where we think they're warranted to make sure that the community does have the right safety standard. The project will be spanned over a summer, winter, summer construction season, so a total duration of some 18 months. In the summertime, there's minimal risk of spill, so we can go out onto the spillway and drill and anchor on the spillway. And in the winter time, we do the work on the abutments while the spillway could be used as an operational spillway to pass floods. The 
Katagunya Dam restoration project is a $38 million total refurbishment of Katagunya's anchoring system using post-tension cables that are the largest in the world. People assume that dams are a very static object, that they don't require any long-term maintenance and operation and surveillance. And that in fact, they tell their story in a very uh, understated way. But in fact, they do have quite a, uh, a life cycle, dams, and they perform different ways. And actually understanding how they work and how they need to be managed is actually quite a skill. For a young engineer, life doesn't get any better than this. I'm working with professionals with hundreds of years of experience. I'm working with A1 contractors. Every day is a different challenge. The project's great and a lot of opportunities for me to learn and to take these learnings onto the next stage of my life. As a project manager working on a $38 million project involving world firsts on a major dam upgrade is a very motivating situation to be in and I'm very proud to be associated with this project with Hydro Tasmania. Hydro Tasmania's major restoration of Katagunya Dam is an exciting and vitally important project that will see Katagunya maintain a key role in the generation of clean hydroelectricity to Tasmania and beyond for many generations to come. Yeah.